Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Welcome back for another episode. We are going to be talking about Florida again, specifically some issues that have been raised in a few articles and a few people have been moaning about the potential of Boring Company projects in this state. And I just wanted to have a quick chat to you about it. Don't be concerned, there's plenty of solutions and I'm going to cover those today. So, what are we going to talk about? Is this even possible? Is this uh, such a difficult, hard, taxing engineering problem that it is not even worth trying to build tunnels in Florida? Now, there's already quite a decent sized tunnel in Florida under the port of Miami, and that obviously indicates that this is possible. However, that was a very expensive project, so you know, really, is this viable financially? If you read this article from Curbed, you would think that it is impossible that the potential of tunnels underneath this particular uh, city or any city in Florida is totally nonsensical and that you'd have to be a complete moron to even attempt to build tunnels. Unfortunately, this article is an absolute pile of garbage stinking horrible garbage it it's wrong in so many ways even at the end it tries to throw in some political hit points and it's just awful it's the worst article i've possibly read in the last 10 years and that is saying something because i've read some garbage recently um so-called experts all these people are uh, fud attacking uh the boeing company the trouble is the focus is now, or largely, the focus has now switched away from Tesla. Tesla started delivering on its targets. Tesla started building more gigafactories. Tesla is delivering very, very high quality uh, vehicles, very high margins in very high numbers. So the focus is now switching to other things. The Boeing company, I expect that Neuralink will come under target soon. Even SpaceX is getting a bit more fun now. So ignore the so-called experts. Look at their predictions they've made in the past two years. Have many come true? Probably less than 10% have actually come true. So they shouldn't be listened to. There's also all these Tesla Q bankrupts uh, making comments about the Boeing company now. I really don't care what they say because you, you know they, they've lost the, they basically lost the trousers betting against Tesla and they're now quite angry about it. So who cares? You know, this is her article, it's awful. It's very bizarre, very bizarre to read this. I, I, there's so, I, I could go through this article and I could list about about seven or eight things that are just so wrong on so many levels, but I'm just not gonna bother because it's just it's just rubbish. You've got train spotters as well, you know. Fortunately, they're very, very upset that Crossrail is still four years late and is still four, um, it's probably 4.5 billion over budget now. I don't really know. It's certainly above 4.25 billion. So there you go, anyway. Let's have a look at Florida. Florida has some unique geology. Um, as you can see from this map here, this area here is not good, specifically this area, and of course up here as well. Um, it's probably better on this map here. As you can see, these are sinkholes. Uh, lots of sinkholes occurred here and along this line here and then across here near Tampa. A lot of these sinkholes have occurred over the last 50, 60 years. So don't get the impression that these things are happening every other day. Um, but they are certainly more numerous in these areas. The key thing to look at here is here. So you can see this area in green. It says cover is 30 to 20 feet thick. The cover or the overburden is the key thing to consider here. Because anything more uh, than 60, 70 foot is concerning for people that are going to be digging tunnels however it is quite uh, thin here it is extremely thin here extremely thin this is near Jacksonville so straight away Jacksonville looks very good for tunnels uh, here as well this area in yellow burr or thinly covered limestone that is perfect absolutely perfect for tunneling because you can go well underneath and you're not going to be that worried about sinkholes. Obviously, there's the potential. You know, 
it can happen, but the probability of it happening is so very, very low that, you, you know, as long as you do the, the work in advance, you know, you, know, you do a good uh, bit of surveying, you're going to uh, find problem areas and it's going to be very, very easy to avoid them. So if we're putting tunnels in this kind of area here, it's not really that much of a problem, really. So that's Miami, that's Jacksonville. This area potentially here could be a bit problematic, but you know the focus should be on the areas where we know the geology. Suits, uh, proof rock. As you can see in blue here, the cover is uh, again 30, 50 feet, uh, mainly cohesive clays. Okay, so we've seen that, we, we can see the data there. We can see that the areas where the Boeing Company wants to tunnel, potentially here in Miami, and then maybe up in Jacksonville, are reasonably good we don't need to worry about that but this this word here cover covered cover and this area in pink here is more than 200 feet cover cover the word cover is very important I often refer to it as overburden so here is a good little uh, illustration of um, the geology underneath Florida uh, obviously this does vary but this is kind of a very uh, kind of accurate uh, depiction of what it will look like in the vast majority of, uh, of Florida. So we have our sandy non-cohesive soil here. Um, not good to build on, you, you know, you, 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 it's, 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 you should never build your house on sand as, uh, on, on sand or soil as you say, or sand, it's definitely sand. You should never build your house on sand and it's, the fact that it's very, very sandy soil. Um, is not good it's very very loose it's non-cohesive um, any kind of small hole in here even if it's four or five inches in diameter you're going to get uh, collapse you're going to get uh, material falling into it clay on the other hand is not too bad I've worked on many jobs where there's a very very thick layer of clay clay obviously varies from your kind of like medium sort of quality clay all the way to a very very thick clay obviously clay absorbs a lot of water and that is a problem um, with expansion and contraction but uh, clay generally is a decent um, material to, to build upon if you can go through it maybe with piles to deeper levels like the limestone here uh, but this sandy soil is is quite a big big problem so you wouldn't want to really tunnel through the sandy soil and you'd probably want to avoid the clay although the clay is quite thin um, the limestone here is the key obviously the limestone is responsible for these sinkholes, um, as you get uh, very kind of uh, slightly acidic water in these areas, it kind of breaks down the limestone. That process is not quick, by the way. It doesn't take place over a matter of weeks. We can talking many, many years and decades of kind of uh, acidic erosion in the limestone. And then obviously you've got the, the overburden, the pressure there pushing down, which then causes collapses and then eventually sinkholes. Um, but basically, what does this mean? We've also got a high water table. The, the water table, by the way, in Florida can range from like around here to go way up and end up within, you know, two foot of the surface. So the water table is constantly up and down. That needs to be considered. You ideally want to be well below uh, the, the water table in this particular area just because of the fact that it's going up and down all the time. So you, 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 want, you want consistency. That's what you're after. So... How does a sinkhole actually form? So you've got erosion in here in these cavities and little bits of, of uh, lime, limestone are falling down. They're getting eroded over time. Um, this here, this actual cavity, again, it could take decades to form. This doesn't happen overnight. Um, and then what you get is you get your overburden. So in our case, this is it's usually the clay. Initially, it's the clay. This layer here falls down into these cavities uh, as the cavities kind of break down. And it's like an arch almost. So the arch breaks and then it falls into the cavity here. Then uh, as that gets bigger, uh, you go past the clay, you, in, you end up with your, your kind of sandy, very, very loose sandy soils. Uh, they have no... Um, no strength in them whatsoever. They're, they're non-cohesive. Unlike the clay is very cohesive, the, the, the sandy soil is not cohesive. 
it doesn't bond together well. As soon as you undercut it uh, by more than, you know, a width of like three or four inches, it, it just starts falling in. It's just nothing to it. And then this is how you end up with this humongous collapse. How does that actually affect the brewing company? Because there's a lot of homeowners in Florida that have basically lost everything due to these sinkholes. Could this potentially happen to the boring company? As you can see, this sinkhole here is ginormous. You know, it's 40, maybe even 45 foot deep. It's a big boy. But the really, really big ones like that are fairly rare. They do happen. They tend to be more like this, you know, where they're like 15, 20 foot deep. Um, yeah, so sinkholes are a problem, but we're going well below, well below that. Here's my wonderful diagram. As you can see, I've got my level and tripod up here. So I'm, I'm gazing into the distance, surveying the landscape. As you can see, everything's very, very flat in Florida. Uh, most of Florida is sort of, you know, like 60, 70, maybe less feet below, uh, sorry, above sea level. So most of the land is 60 feet above sea level, maybe less than that. We have all our cavities here in our limestone. So we have our our sandy soil, which is this one here. That's our sand, sandy soil. Uh, and then we have our clay, which is like this layer here. And then we have our limestone. So this kind of gives you a good example of the proportions we're talking about. The, the limestone below the, the, the layers of clay is 9,000, 10,000, maybe even 11,000 foot deep. It is super, super deep. The deeper you go, the less cavities there are. At least 80% of the cavities in the clay, yeah? So sort of this area here is in the top sort of 40 foot. 80%. The other 20% is in the next sort of 100 foot. So you've got 80% here, 20% here. So straight away, there's a path forward here. If you can go deeper, you can avoid cavities. Therefore, uh, you're less likely to hit them and therefore you're less likely to have problems occur directly above the tunnel. So how do we do that? So the first things first, you're going to have to start with um, a launch pit. Launch pit is going to take you down below the sand layer, below the clay, and then well into the limestone. We're talking quite a deep launch pit, 60, maybe even 70, 80 foot deep. It's doable. I've seen it done. It's not an insanely difficult problem. You know, there's definitely a cost associated with that. Um, but all in all, pretty Pretty, pretty possible. It's pretty possible. I, 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 I'd say I'd use the word it is hard, but I, I wouldn't use the word it's you know super difficult. So what we're we talking? So you want to be somewhere in the region. So let's assume that this layer here is forty foot. So we've got forty foot of clay and sand. Yeah, this layer here you probably want it to be maybe 50, maybe 60 foot, probably slightly less. This probably is gonna be 30 foot, but we're just gonna say 40 foot for, for today. So let's say it's 50 foot. So the top of your tunnel is gonna be, so the crown of your tunnel is gonna be 90 foot below the, uh, the street level. That will protect you because there's a lot less cavities in here. You, you're getting well below the water table, so you can focus on that problem. You don't need to worry about the water constantly fluctuating above and below the tunnel because that could cause you certainly some issues. Uh, you're going to avoid the ma vast majority of these cavities. Where, so, for example, this cavity here, as you can see, I've drawn all these little cavities. Cavities are very small, by the way. You, most of these cavities are going to be less than you know, 10, 12 inches in diameter, way less than that. Now you may have some that are, you know, three, four foot, but they're again, quite rare. Where you do find those cavities, most cavities are gonna be well under four, 
four inches, well under four inches. So when you do find a cavity like this one, which is quite big, so let's say this cavity is, you know, five foot tall and two foot wide, um, you're going to want to avoid it. So in fact, I'm going to change my pen color. Uh, you're going to be coming along here, your TBM, and then you're going to go like that and avoid it. So you want to stay well below this area here. You obviously want to watch about this here. So let's just give you an example of a sinkhole. So here is quite a large cavity. It's about 20 foot wide at the base, if not slightly more. Let's say, let's say 24 foot wide. Um, as you can see, our void opens here. All our clays are, are slowly over time as that's filling up with water. They're falling in. Um, then you just end up with a, a huge collapse. All that sandy soil foil falls in. Uh, this guy's house is now basically worthless. He's gonna have to sell the land, which is worth nothing and just abandon it basically. Um, you fill it in. This is not going to happen here. Even if a massive cavity opened up here like this, there's still all this over here, all this limestone, yeah? which is gonna form like an arch overneath, over the top. You're not gonna get sinkholes forming this deep in the limestone. The problem is these kind of cavities that are close to the surface. So like that one and that one, and maybe even that one and that one. I'm not, I'm not worried about these other cavities. I'm not worried about that cavity or that cavity or that cavity or that cavity even that cavity. I'm not worried about them. They're not the problem. I just need to make sure that the TBM is avoiding the big ones. So you're going to do a quite uh, concise, uh, considerable uh, survey. You're going to check the ground. You're going to establish where there are these large cavities and you're going to establish a safe uh, boring uh, depth that is going to avoid, you know, 98% of them. And where you do get close to them, you're going to do your very best to avoid them by either diving down or maybe even diving up are going to the left or going to the right. So you're going to avoid them where possible. Sometimes, you know, if you can't avoid it, you're just going to have to go through it. You're going to have to go through it slowly. It's going to be full. It's probably going to be filled with lots of water, lots of sand and loose, uh, non-cohesive material. So you, you, you're just going to have to lose a couple of days. Once you've gone through it, you know, so be it. You go on to the next one. So it's not an issue. The people making up all these huge... Uh, you know, scare stories about sinkholes forming and the tunnels are going to get going to collapse and, uh, you know, all the buildings above the or nearby to the tunnel, they're going to suddenly over time, they're going to collapse. Even if this tunnel does um, uh, impact the aquifer, there's so many holes, so many holes in this limestone, the water will just find another way to go around. It's not, it's not an issue. And, um, any kind of impact from this this tunnel that is, is negative will take decades and decades to uh, you know bear fruit as it were and even then the the actual uh, consequences of that will be uh, quite minor because we're going for quite a deep tunnel and remember we can just keep adding more tunnels so you can add another tun tunnel here at 110 foot 120 foot, 130 foot, 140. You could just keep adding more and more tunnels. Uh, granted, you probably want 20 foot in between them, so it'd be like 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. No problem. No problem whatsoever. So, that's my thoughts on sinkholes. What else was there? Well, there was this absolutely bonkers statement that Miami is going to be underwater by 2045, yeah? And it just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Uh, the city has been taking action against climate change for well over 20 years. Uh, they're building up the seawalls. Um, they're installing all these new stormwater uh, drainage systems. They're installing these uh, one-way valves. They're, they're doing a lot of things, raising roads. Some of the roads in Miami have been raised by over 20 inches. Um, and this is going to continue. Uh, you know, you look at these huge skyscrapers, imagine the millions and millions of dollars that have been invested in these uh, um, real estate developments. The people that have developed this real estate want to protect their investments. 
So they're going to be pushing the governor, they're going to be pushing the mayor, they're going to be pushing the local council. Keep building more uh, infrastructure to protect against um, you know, these floods. And these floods, I mean, they, most of the time, they're only around four or five inches of water. It's not excessive. It's not like people are drowning. We're talking five, six, maybe seven inches of water here. It's it, it it's just not it is not super excessive, and this can all be prevented uh, just by extending the seawall. So, by increasing the depth of the seawall, uh, maybe building a new seawall, or just by adding to the existing seawall, maybe you add another four or five foot. Uh, that's going to protect you until at least you know twenty eighty. Uh, in the event that you know you discover that that's not enough, you, you know you just add another three or four foot. So you just keep building the walls up. Um, look at you know uh, look at uh, the Netherlands the ne they don't like me calling it Holland but so let's call it Netherlands so the Netherlands is like two three foot below uh, sea level uh, they build up built up incredible sea defenses uh, they have zero problems they have all these dikes everywhere uh, that that is very very hard protecting this coastline here is going to be relatively easy um, just install bigger seawalls, just negate the effects, raise the roads. If some buildings are gonna to have to, you know, convert the ground floor into essentially a basement, then so be it. But uh, there's plenty of solutions and we're not talking ex excessive amounts of money. When you consider that, you know, these skyscrapers are costing, you know, 500, 600 million dollars, you know, spending, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine billion dollars on a seawall is, is peanuts, basically. And I'm sure you could raise that money in, uh, you know, via taxes if it benefits everyone. So people would be happy to pay another, you know, ten, fifteen dollars a month if that enables them to have a much more safer uh, community. So there you go. Don't don't listen to the fud. Don't listen to all these problems that people keep poking at the Boeing company because they are not serious problems. They can be easily overcome with current engineering uh, solutions. There's no problem with sinkholes. There's, there's plenty of good uh, limestone deep below Miami and Jacksonville and other places that can be used. There's not going to be ex any, there's no sinkholes. There's going to be no sinkholes caused by tunnels under Miami or Jacksonville. Uh, there's there's going to be no ingress of, uh, of water into the tunnels. It's going to be watertight. There's going to be no excessive flooding in Miami or any other city along the coast in Florida. Uh, because what's going to happen is people are going to invest the money pr to protect against those sea level rises. Because when you look at the sea level rises and you record it, it's less than four millimeters a year, well under four millimeters a year. So over time, you can react to things happening. So it's not an issue. Don't listen to the FUD. I'm telling you now, I've worked in this industry for almost 15 years. There's so many solutions. I couldn't name them all. It's gonna be easy to fix these problems and we can also, as an added bonus, solve soul destroying traffic and cut the costs of uh, a mile of tunnel below $6.2 million. So please like and subscribe to this channel. Join me on Discord, Twitter and Instagram. I'd really, really appreciate the support. Uh, and obviously, if you have any comments or feedback on what I've said today, please drop it in the comments section below. Um, very interested to hear from people who live in Florida uh, about what you think. Uh, Patreons, obviously, yeah. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Difficult times at the moment, I know that, but you continue to support me. Really very much appreciate all that support. So much, so much. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate that. Please come and join me on the next episode. I'd very much appreciate that. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and remember, don't be boring. I will see you on the next video. Take care, stay safe. Thank you. Wow. It's all fake news, it's phony stuff, it didn't happen.